Hello, Rosemary. I see um, you are connected. Uh, well, it was quick. So it seems like the login process was pretty easy, as I explained in the email that I sent you. So now we're gonna, I'm gonna give you access to your audio and video settings, and we're gonna start. All right, I'll see you there. Okay. How is it going today? Ready for the physics class? Yes. It's gonna be pretty short. It's just a demo, all right? So, um, okay, um, before going into the content, so today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the receiver functions and I'm gonna explain the amplification one. I'm going to use the machine, the system, so we're gonna screen share all of this. Uh, but before going in there, um, let me show you some features about this platform, okay? Um, here we have the message or chat session. So I'll send you one. Okay, so there we go. You can answer as well. Uh, if you want to send me a private message or want to send me a private message, I, we can do that as well. I'm going to click what is this private in my term. And now I can say, well, I'm going to send a message to Rosemary. And it's right there. Good. So this is a whiteboard as well. So in this whiteboard, um, I can draw or write whatever I want. So we can do that as well. Um, I'm going to be able to upload homeworks. I think I have one homework here that I will upload so you can see it. So that's one of the homeworks. In fact, that's the first one that we're going to have on this course. All right. So the same way I, yes, yes. Am I gonna be able to print out this homework or do I have to do it here in the platform? Uh, I will send you the homeworks by email. So you're able to print those, keep those for you. And I will upload it myself in here and I will select the answer. If, for example, this one, all of the following statements are true about an ultrasonic wave except so the answer is A, so as you can see it. I'm just gonna yeah. just give you the answer here. Okay, so the same way I'm able to upload a homework, uh, I can upload one uh, PowerPoint as well. So we can do that. But today we're not gonna use any PowerPoint because I'm just gonna explain the receiver functions. If I was functions. going to send it as well by email? The uh, PowerPoints, we can have it through Dropbox. Okay. Okay. So if you have one account in Dropbox, you, you I can send it to there. Or you can create one. It's free. And then we can share all these documents through there. So receiver functions. Let's see if you remember from the school or if this is your first time watching the physics. Or I don't know, but maybe you remember something about this receiver functions. Can you tell me the first one? Uh, the first receiver function is uh, amplification. That's amplification. All right, I'll tell you the second one, which is compensation. Compensation. All right, I'll tell you the first one, which is compression. Compression. All right, then uh, number four yeah. is demodulation. And then we have rejection. Yeah. Okay, so the five receiver functions, and you need to know this in this same order. Okay, amplification, compensation, compression, demodulation, rejection. And nice way to remember all of this is they are in alphabetic order. So A, then you have C, then you have C here. Now this one goes first because you don't have an R in here, you have a E. So compensation goes before compression. Then D, then R. So that's a nice way to remember. There's another function that we call preamplification, but it doesn't belong to the receiver 
belongs to the transducer. Sometimes it's kind of confusing for the students because they think uh, pre-amplification belongs to the receiver and that's not the case. So saying that, I want to explain amplification to you using the system. So I'm going to screen share the system with you. That's something else that we can do with this platform. So now I'm screen sharing. And let me know if you can see the system in there. Yes, I can see. You can see it. And also, let me see if you can see this keyboard. Yes. Okay, right on the keyboard, I have this setting here that we call the B gain, all right, or the overall gain. It has different names depending on the system you're working in. But I'm just going to play with this and then you see what is going to happen in the picture. So let me uh, amplify the picture here. And I'm going to show you something. All right. So are you able to see the picture in there? Yes. All right. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to reduce the gain. I'm going to reduce the gain here. I'm going to reduce the gain here more and more. All right. And I'm going to do a dual picture. And in the picture, my right, I'm going to increase the gain. Now tell me what happened when I did this. Well, if you reduce too much of the gain, you are not going to be able to see anything because the image is going to be completely, completely dark. All right. So that's good. Perfect. So if I reduce my gain, the whole picture, all echoes are going to turn. They're going to become dark. That's what's going to happen in here. But if I increase my gain, then all echoes are going to be treated the same ways. All of them are going to become bright. So amplification, the amplification, so we're going to talk about this one. So it is definitely adjustable. All right, using the overall gain. B gain or 2D gain depends on the system, the name changes. Um, the units that we're going to use are decibels, all right? But let me show you something which I think is pretty important because in your test you have around 10 questions about this. Let me go to the, let me go to the internet one more time and I show you this here. You know that the ARDMS now has this some this type of questions where you have this virtual system or machine, and um, you basically have to fix the picture. So let's take a look to this question here. So when you take a look to this picture, what do you think the problem is? Too much gain. Too much gain, perfect, right? That's the first thing that you have to do. You say, well, the problem is that my picture is too bright. So then you say, well, the way the professor told me to fix this is reducing the gain. So you go here and take a look at this. You click over this, and then you have the possibility and the chance to fix the gain. Now you go to 75, or you can go to 50%. But you'll learn something in a school the gain uses units of decibels. But the ARDMS has this set up in percentage. So for this purpose, just remember, it could be 75 for 50%. So that's good to know. So that's the virtual system or console that they use. And um, it's a good way to you know, um, check if the students are learning the instrumentation and playing with the system. Now, 
I don't know if you can see me right now because I can see you, but I don't see my face on the screen. Uh, no, because I'm a screen sharing. When that's the case, um, your face is not going to show up in here. Okay, so okay. I have a question about this console that the ARDMS have in the website. Um, so you were telling me that I'm going to have a kind of uh, questions like this. Mm -hmm. um, if I even, even because I didn't see any change in the image when you adjust the gain from 100% to 50%. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, that's, that's, that's a good question. You know, like all the students ask the same thing. That's where the trick is. They don't want, I mean, they don't want you to notice any change because the main purpose of this is that you go straight to the point to the change that you need to make. So if you start planning with this and making so many changes and waiting for the picture to change, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. The trick in here is that you know that the problem is the gain and then you go and fix it. So the answer is no, there won't be any change in the picture. Not at all. If you start like playing with all of this and you're not pretty sure, you can always come back again to the previous adjustments Click in here where it says reset, all right? And then as it says in here, your question is gonna come back to original state, all right? And then you start, you start once again to try to make the fix in here. Okay. All right, perfect. All right, so it is adjustable. It makes your picture completely dark or bright. Right, and for the purposes of this virtual system that they use in your exam, you're gonna use 50 to 75% when you adjusted it, all right, good. Now I'm gonna show you something here in my system, all right? Let's come back to my system one more time. Any questions until now? No. Doing good, can you see my system in there? Yes, I can see it. Good, perfect, beautiful. All right, so we're live now. I'm going to press here, and can you take a look to the left of my, of my screen in there? Yes. This is power 60%. I'm going to reduce that power, okay? Reduce the power, reduce the power more and more. Can you tell me what's going on? Well, the image is, the image is uh, getting dark. The image is getting darker. Yes, it makes sense. And when I increase the power, then the image is just getting brighter. You know, the orbital gain makes the same thing, right? The orbital gain makes the same thing. It's just that the power makes it in transmission and the orbital gain makes this in reception. The power is a function of the pulsar, and the overall gain is the function of the receiver. Now, if you're scanning and you want to make a picture dark or brighter, let's say if you're going to make it brighter, which of the settings are you going to use? That's my question for you. The power or the gain? What do you think? Can you repeat that again, please? If you're scanning, and your picture is too dark and you want to make it brighter now you have two options to do it you can use the power or you can use the gain so which one would you use to make your picture brighter the gain you will use the gain and why rosemary huh excuse me why do you use the gain and not the power? Well, because when you increase uh, or amplify the uh, signals, you are not causing any uh, damage to the patient. Well, that's something that we call the A-L-A-R-A 
principle. That means it's slow, it's reasonable, achievable. That means that you may use the power as less as possible because based on bio effects, power may affect the tissues in the patient. Remember that until now, there's no any harmful bio effects detected uh, with the intensities that we use. You know, we use 100 um, a milliwatts per centimeter squared as PTA when the ultrasound is unfocused. When it's focused as a thousand milliwatts um, per centimeter squared as PTA. So based on that and those intensity values, there's no damage, but there may be damage in the future. So they, you know, they're all the time starting all of this. So we have to use the power as less as possible. So if your image is too dark, you want to make it brighter using the gain. So you increase the gain. Now, if your image is too bright, what do you do? You reduce the gain or you reduce the power? Reduce first the, the power. So you reduce first the power. And this is the way it's supposed to be, even though when we practice in real life, we don't touch the power too much. But this is the way it's supposed to be. So um, yes, that's my demo for today. So I explained the amplification. There's more information about all this receiver functions. But for all of those, we're going to use the system because um, that's the main purpose. So you know how to work with this and make your adjustments. But do you have any more questions? No, it's very clear for me. All right. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope to see you soon. All right. So have a good night. Bye. Thank you.